together for Jesus Christ. I want to share with you a word that I have on my heart for us. If you have your Bible, let's go to, to John chapter 5, verse 3. It says the following, in these, it's talking about Pool of Bethesda, in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. And then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. And I want us to jump to the Old Testament book of Joshua chapter 9 verse 14. Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions but they did not ask the counsel of the Lord. Uh, pray this prayer out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, open my heart to your word. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your spirit. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your faith. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome everybody who came here today. I see some new faces. It's so wonderful to see you. Somebody told me before the service that they started to come when I left and uh but they were really uh surprised to be here and so for those of you who started to come when i wasn't here i welcome you i hope uh that you stay in our church and bring a lot of your friends and all of your family in jesus name amen 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 and so we we love i love our church i love our leaders i love everybody and so um it's been a really really a uh, a sad moment to miss our church and so um but i'm really really happy to see everybody here in jesus name amen 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 let's give jesus a round of applause for our church for wonderful pastors, for all the visitors that are here. I want to share with you today about in the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5 that we have read, there was this pool that had five entry points and the Bible says that there was nothing magical about the water. Yes, this water was significant. But what was really significant is that certain times the angel of God will come into this water, stir it up. And after the water was stirred, Anybody who jumps in the pool immediately gets healed of any problem they had. I mean, it almost sounds like a Hollywood movie. Like the one that they uh, made about uh, something flying out of the earth into a certain place and you get healed on, under, under a certain machine. And so it almost sounds like a magical, it almost sounds like it, it's not real. That a place, that a, a water is there, a pool, and then the angel, a water gets stirred and you jump in and you get healed of any sickness you've ever had and you get completely healed but you only can do it once when the water is stirred now we've ministered our pastor many times different messages from this scripture and so I have and many more times we will do because this is a significant very significant moment in the Bible but today I want to share about something else from the scripture the Word of God there's two words in Greek language for the Word of God. One is Logos and the second one is Rhema. Logos is the word that was written. It's the general scripture. And Rhema is the word that's from the written becomes alive to you like a revelation. A specific for a specific moment of your life and it changes your life completely. Logos is like this water in the pool. It's wonderful. It's genuine. It's real. It's truthful. It makes you clean when you get into it. It makes you wet when you get into it. it, it the word is, is power. But something happens when the Spirit of God makes the same word of God that before you read and it made you clean and wet. The Holy Spirit makes this word come alive. The same Bible, the same verse, but it comes alive. Something happens. It makes you whole. The Logos makes you wet. Rhema makes you whole. Information of the Bible is what makes us know the Bible more, know about God more, know about our faith more, know about doctrine more, be more equipped, be more this and that. But when something happens when Holy Spirit takes this word and He makes it alive, 
we become completely different people we become whole and we become healed and we become completely changed can somebody say amen there's a difference between rhema and logos dr young Cho, who is the pastor of the largest church in the world shared in his story in in one of his books about walking on water how some people walk on water when god told them to do so and this happened before in the bible uh, jesus walked on water now chris angel and some other guys over there on tv they tried to pretend to walk on water jesus actually walked on water and so what happened is some people took his book about walking by faith and walking on water and there was 14 of them and decided to walk on water and they drowned and they wrote to Dr. Young Cho and they said, see people took your book and they tried to do what you said in your book and it didn't work. He says, I didn't say to walk on water. Jesus walked on water. He says, the problem is they had logos, not rhema. He says, and between these two is a life and death issue. Israel has a rhema to go through the Red Sea. Egyptians for them it's a logos it's not from God and they go through it and they die but Israel goes through it and they live the point is this is that we must understand a Christian life really depends not on knowing the Bible but on knowing the God of the Bible through the Bible the Christian life depends not on knowing information of the Bible but allowing the Holy Spirit to make that Bible become a revelation to us and for our lives to be dramatically changed by that. Without revelation we cannot have revival and revelation is not you understanding Greek, Latin and Hebrew. Revelation is not when you can finally discover if Adam had a belly button or not. Revelation is not when you can find a secret, apocalyptic, or some other code in the Bible where certain things mean certain things and add certain numbers and you found a revelation. Means you found something that everybody else thinks is purely confusing. Revelation is not something out of this world. Revelation is the same water that you see every day you walk into, get stirred. And you walk in it as you walked before except before it made you wet and now it made you whole. The same verse shuts up a fire inside and it shuts up so big inside that it changes your world and you're trying to tell everybody of what you read there and they're like yes I read that too it made me wet and you're saying but it made me whole. That is a revelation and that revelation is what brings revival because that means Holy Spirit is speaking the Bible says in 1st Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 it says that in the days of Samuel when he ministered to the priest Eli the word of the Lord was rare and there was no widespread revelation in those days there was spiritual deadness not because Torah wasn't there not because Ten Commandments wasn't there not because the pool wasn't there the sick were there, the, the people were hurting and the law was there, the Moses was there but what wasn't there and there was not a lot of stirring because it's the stirring that brings revival. It's not the Bible and the bookstores, it's this becoming alive in the lives of people only through the Holy Ghost that brings the revival and holiness and conviction in our lives. Somebody say amen. Without Holy Spirit this book we, we must understand three times in the Bible three very key moments that most of us use for the Word of God for example in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 it says faith comes by the Word and the Word of God and many people say the faith comes from the Bible faith comes from the Word of God but if you read it in Hebrew and I didn't I just simply read people who read in Hebrew and this is what they say in Romans chapter 10 it does not say faith comes from logos it says faith comes from rhema could it be no wonder you may say i read the bible but my faith is not fueled my faith doesn't jump out when i read it why because you and i are reading the bible in english but in order to have rhema you must read the bible in the holy spirit 
Holy Spirit makes the Bible becomes alive and makes it a revelation and it jumps faith inside without Holy Spirit but with a good commentary and with a good dictionary and with a good translation the Bible makes you clean and wet but it doesn't make you whole and changed faith comes from rhema not logos the second verse we always quote is Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 where Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God that word word of God in that context means rhema which means the word of God that feeds us is the word of God that's rhema not logos we all agree how many times you read the Bible and it didn't feed you but bored you let's be very honest because the Bible in itself without Holy Spirit is a collection of books poetry Psalms Proverbs history some good teaching and some wonderful things that are all inspired by God but without Holy Spirit it's not going to feed you only rhema feeds you can somebody say amen another verse that all of us we know is the word of God is a sword of the spirit and that word in the Hebrew over there is also uh, or whatever language it's it is in it's rhema it's not logos that means the word that I fight with is the word that is not just information but it's a revelation inside of me it becomes real it's a revelation now from what I've shared there's nothing much new to you uh, that you have not heard before if you have been faithfully attending our church the purpose of me sharing this and why I read the second verse of Joshua is Joshua and I'm gonna tie these two things together Joshua one day sees people coming and they look really old they look like they've been on the journey for a long time they're dressed um, their clothes are worn out their wine skins are worn out their bread is really old and they come and they say that we are ambassadors from afar we've heard about your God and we've come to pay homage and to pay respect to you and we want to make a contract and a covenant with you because we are from afar and we want to honor your God and Joshua says oh really can you prove that you are from afar they said oh yes look at our clothes our clothes are worn out they're so old look at our bread we've taken it when it was fresh and it's so old it has mold in it look at our wine skins they're cracked they're gone look look at us I mean we look so worn out and beaten down and the Bible says that Joshua looks at all of that and says okay you must be ambassadors and it says this and he did not ask the counsel of the Lord what is the point here? Joshua has no revelation in his situation and therefore he gets misled, deceived and ruled by his situation. When we don't walk with the revelation of God, we are doomed to be ruled by the situation of life. Can I hear an amen? Let me say that again. And I want you to say this out loud after me. Say, if I don't walk, say it loud. Say, if I don't walk in the revelation of God, I am doomed to be ruled by my situation. If you don't walk in the revelation of God, you will be doomed to live by your situation. Satan will use your situation to drive his agenda into your mind he will take your sickness and he will say look at this it's a proof you're gonna die he's gonna take your disappointment and say look at this bread it proves you're an ambassador but you're not he will take this and says it proves never ever things will work out in your life and you will say you're right you have a point I've tried 10 times and it didn't work why try 11 he will take this and to confirm that and without revelation we will base our 
faith and base everything that we have on what we hear and what we speak and what our situation tells us and if Joshua would have in that moment paused and says thank you for telling me that you are from a far country thank you for showing me the bread and showing me the clothes and showing me all of these things but I need to get a second report to confirm what you're saying I need to get alone with God and I need to ask God I know that your evidence is beyond verdict your evidence is so convincing but I'm a man of God I'm a spiritual man and I don't trust my eyes I trust my God because my God is bigger than what I see and they may look at him and say Joshua you're insane isn't this enough Joshua says yes it will be enough if you don't have a God but I have a God who looks beyond clothes and who looks beyond wineskins and who looks beyond all of that and he knows what's beyond that and I need to talk to him but Joshua did not ask God for a revelation and he left being completely disappointed by his situation Satan will use a situation to mislead you to misguide you he will use a sickness to tell you God doesn't love you he will use a disappointment to tell you you will never make it and he will always connect certain things and if we don't have a revelation we will come to church and we will look at the fact where's the rest of the people and we will be coming to the conclusion based on what we see or one service we come and we see everything packed and we will come to the conclusion based on what we see everything about our life is going to be one thing we make decisions we come to conclusions based on what we see and what we hear and what we feel and what our circumstances look like and those are the people who will be like Joshua three days later biting his tongue and says I wish I would have known but it was too late today is the day we don't live by what we see we don't live by what we hear we don't live by what we feel we live by what God says if hell is breaking loose in your life and Satan is whispering and says you're not gonna make it look at and he brought the evidence and he brings clothes and he says this proves that you are an ambassador say Satan this proves this is close this has nothing to do with who I am the old clothes on them proved that the clothes were old but they did not prove they were ambassadors the clothes have nothing to do with what they were saying and same thing the things we go through have nothing to do with where we are headed to the things we are facing have nothing to do with what God has a plan for our lives TB Joshua says you can never know someone's future by looking at their present because a man of revelation is not moved by what he sees, by what he feels, or what he hears, or what circumstances looks like. He is moved by there is a God who created what I see and he can change what I see. And I have to get a second report from him. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say praise the Lord? Can somebody say praise the Lord? Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. We are in this place today we must have a revelation about our situation a revelation is what God says a revelation is not what I feel a revelation is not what you see a revelation is not even what the doctor says a revelation is what God says about a particular situation and in that revelation is our victory if we don't have a revelation and if you get a raise you have a praise report but the next day if the tire goes flat you have a nervous breakdown everything is up and down everything is based on the mood everything is based on how I feel everything is based on how things are going financially and everything I'm not saying that we're not gonna feel anything bad but there is a difference between being driven by your feelings and there's a difference between being driven by this is what God says and I stake my life at it and I am not going to trust what I see or what I hear if it conflicts with the Word of God if I do not have a revelation I am doomed to live 
by my situation and my situation will betray me mislead me defeat me lie to me hit me in the back and make fun of me and spit in my face it did that to Joshua who was spiritual man of God it will do that to me and it will do that to you it will do that to everybody it will make us miserable and pitiful and then God will look at us and say you did not trust me because it will make us not trust in God but today you must you and I must obtain a revelation from God concerning your situation and the revelation from God is simple close don't prove what the devil said revelation from God is simple Satan will use our situation to tell us we're not loved by God we don't have a destiny we don't have a plan and we need to tell Satan back Satan you are a liar if your lips move you're lying I know you're lying when you are, your lips are moving and right now your lips are moving therefore you're lying you are father of lies it means there's nothing good comes out and nothing true comes out from your mouth and therefore I reject those things and Satan will say but look look and you say this has nothing to do with what you're saying because what you're saying is you're manipulating the evidence for your lies but this has nothing to do with what you're saying this can be changed by the God I serve A revelation causes us not to be ruled by our situation actually a revelation will cause us to change our situation can somebody say amen a revelation will cause us to change our situation by the glory of God God doesn't change our life first he changes us first he changes a revelation inside first and then everything from there changes can somebody say praise the Lord somebody say praise the Lord we must understand God is always in control God will never leave us and we should never live by our feelings I had an, a very interesting experience it wasn't spiritual in in Ukraine we we stayed in this really beautiful really expensive apartment uh, my, my aunt's apartment one morning we uh, we cooked eggs boiled eggs the only problem is we did not turn off the stove we left to the conference and um, nine hours later we realized we did not eat our eggs and then we realized we most likely didn't even turn off the stove so the first thing in my mind is I have memories of some other people who did that before and burned the whole house my wife has memories of her neighbors in Russia who did that and burned the whole house and so in the, in the train we're thinking it's been nine hours our phones don't work there and we're like oh my goodness we just went to this expensive place and if somebody even finds out uh, we might have burned the whole place in the next second the moment we thought those thoughts we went from happy being in Ukraine to depressed slash suicidal because in my mind the only thing I'm thinking if if the whole house burned down it's on 23rd floor and it's worth about you know 300 something thousand dollars uh, we're not gonna be able to pay I mean it's over for us the rest of our life we're gonna have to pay that off so I'm like Lord let the train get off of the trails and take us to heaven so we're literally I mean we're thinking there and I told my wife I was like okay look, I'm like baby it's it's not gonna happen I'm like I know I'm like there's something about it that's wrong about what we're saying and what we're feeling because number one in that apartment we were bringing an offering in Ukraine and it was a very large offering and it was there and I said Lord will never allow an egg to kill the offering I said I had this piece I'm like secondly, secondly it's a very expensive apartment and all the appliances they have there they have something in those appliances I know I'm not sure but I know they churn off the eggs after 30 minutes when they realize the owners forgot about the eggs I never knew about that the stuff like that even exists but I told her and I even though inside of me I was really worried but I had a very very weird piece and uh, I was like nothing's gonna work out not everything's gonna be fine nothing bad is gonna happen and uh, well my wife was a lot more worried than I was we got out of the train and we see the apartment already 
And so, you know, and I'm expecting smoke. I don't see smoke. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's already gone, you know. And so we started to run toward the apartment. But while we're running, one thing in my heart I have is this, is that there, there's no way. It's not going to burn. That there's no way it's going to burn. Everything's going to be fine. We walk in. We don't see no fire trucks, nothing. We walk into the apartment. We don't see any smoke. And we go, and yes, it's true. Our eggs are on the stove. And they're still being warmed up. The water did not evaporate. And while it was being cooked for 10 hours. And now I understand if this story gets to my end, I will never, ever come close to any of her houses. It's fine. But one thing I've learned from that, to me, it was a spiritual experience. You have no idea how stressful and draining emotionally those 15 minutes were. And in that moment, I had to make one decision. Is this is not to trust my feelings something deep inside I knew it, it can't God I've been through worse and God always saw me through he will never let this happen to me you've been through something worse than what you're going through and it looks so big and you got through whatever you're facing now is not as big and God will see you through your situation will mislead you if you don't live by revelation we must have a revelation in Jesus mighty name because somebody say amen. amen guys this new year that we are walking into I want us to I want you to just remind you a few things I want us to have revelation on one thing that I want us to have revelation on this year is have a revelation about prayer and relationship with Holy Spirit we we all understand we need to pray there's a difference when a prayer and a prayer as communication with Holy Spirit becomes a revelation it means it hits you the light comes up it dawns on you and you begin to pray differently it, I think this is what started to happen to me for the past five six months but really really started to happen to me for the last three months where prayer became a revelation I've always was I was known to be a praying man but for the past few years the prayer was just simply become became when the prayer becomes a routine when the prayer becomes a duty it, it, it makes you wet it makes you clean but it doesn't make you whole when prayer becomes a revelation means you go into a prayer closet to have communion with Holy Spirit to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and sometimes I found out that prayer can be so boring so hard when you pray wrongly when you come and you're trying to stir yourself up and something I've been doing hearing from other people is sometimes before coming to prayer I will sit in the prayer room and actually I will turn on a sermon and listen to that sermon in my prayer room until something jumps inside for me to pray if I don't feel like praying I don't pray because God's not gonna hear it I'm not gonna hear it I'm gonna waste my time and get depressed because you leave, you, you feel sometimes you walk into a prayer room and God walked out the moment you walked in. And nobody benefits from that prayer. And so when the revelation of prayer hits, you don't just simply come and clock out as though God holds a clock in heaven. He says, okay, 30 minutes, you got it. But you walk in and you prepare your heart even if it takes 90% of your prayer time to prepare your heart so that your prayer can be something that comes from your spirit that connects with God you must have a revelation about prayer this coming year I want us to set a discipline for each one of us in here who want to see the presence of God move to spend at least one hour with Holy Spirit in your prayer room every day I heard that uh, from Pastor Vladimir Montan from Ukraine on a business meeting he was talking to businessmen and some of those businessmen were really really busy well business and businessmen business and business go together <laughs> businessmen are busy because they have business and <coughs> he told all the businessmen he says you must spend at least one hour in prayer every single day and well on the table that we were sitting there were a lady who owned a restaurant another guy owned a coal uh, station another person owned uh, some trains and uh, they're like oh we're busy and Montan rebuked them and he said as a businessman he says you need to spend at least one hour in prayer and you will begin to notice a change in your business but this is what he says that really hit me he says if prayer and relationship with Holy Spirit and prayer is not a revelation to you 
he says you won't do that consistently he says you will do that right now for next week and after that you stop he says it has to be a revelation not maybe too deep that you're like oh, i'm gonna pray but it's something just 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 hits you i must spend time with the holy spirit and Montan, he always does it really wise he gets one of his businessmen gets gets him up who uh gives one million dollar a year to ministry and about fifty thousand dollars a month uh, he gives a year a month and then a one million a year and he asks him he says you're very busy businessman everybody knows you in Kiev you're very wealthy and you give so much money away can you tell us why is it important to spend one hour with the Holy Spirit and all of these businessmen you know who who make five thousand a month like, okay okay I want to listen and he says he says I have so many projects that he says if I just begin to mention he says some of you will have a brain freeze but he says every single day I spend one hour with the Holy Spirit as a businessman and he starts sharing different stories how he drove by a field and Holy Spirit quickened and says this is the field you should build lots on he says Lord I've called that owner and he never wanted to sell that field he never wanted to give that field and he even cussed me out and hang up on me and he said and the Holy Spirit told him call him again he calls him and this owner as though he had a brand new heart he says of course we would love to sell it to you he says where you've been I've been looking for you and he starts sharing story after story when Holy Spirit when the real estate market crashed in Ukraine and nobody could sell anything and Holy Spirit gave him an idea he says I want you to print 5,000 flyers and stamp them on one street one particular street he says I did that and I start selling 60 70 percent more than anybody else in Kiev one of the top businessmen in Kiev spends one hour with the Holy Spirit you are not a top businessman in Tri-Cities you will be if you spend time with the Holy Spirit and this coming year you and I need to make a decision spending time Holy Spirit is not your dad your mom or even your pastor he is the God of universe and if anybody knows anything about life love or money it's gonna be him we must have a revelation of prayer I'm not talking about reading prayer I'm not talking about praying to Virgin Mary or Virgin some other virgin I am talking about praying and fellowshipping with the one called the Holy Spirit I'm not talking about even reciting Lord's Prayer and just doing this and leaving I'm not talking about religious routine I'm talking about getting in the room and talking and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit and if you walk in and you don't feel it turn on a CD turn on a sermon get something your heart stirred and then you pray so when you walk out you walk out like a giant you may be this tall but you walk out like a giant because you talk to the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen the second revelation we must have this coming year and we must have it as a revelation you've heard this so many times in our church and that is this the reality of the spiritual world our pastor preached on it so many times he taught about it and some of you for some of us spiritual world is a water that makes you wet he's like yeah I know demons exist yeah I know we see them on the prayer line they manifest and and they're kind of weird and yeah this demon is stronger than the other one and everything but the revelation the curses are real they can destroy people's lives it must become a reality without this revelation our cell groups cannot grow this coming year without this revelation as cell leaders this needs to sink in and like prophet tb joshua says get into our blood are we demon hunters no but at the same time we must understand we cannot effectively minister to people and have a successful life if there is someone somewhere stealing things and we're simply living being oblivious and being completely ignorant of the truth that the whole world lays under the sway of satan spiritual world must become a reality for us where we come to service and we honor God we welcome the Holy Spirit and what we do in our services and then we don't beg God for anything we praise him for everything and we fight the devil because God did not steal your health God did not steal your joy God did not steal nothing from you God took not a dime from you Satan did and you need to go against him in Jesus name can somebody say amen the third revelation that we must have this coming year is a revelation 
about evangelism about evangelism and about souls we are coming to a place where we are going to see people saved every single service and more than just two or three people i was reading mantian's book this this morning uh, when he started the church 10 years ago in uh, dnipropetrovsk uh, the particular city in ukraine and the church grew to 130 people in 18 months and after that the church stopped growing and he went for he brought uh, this revivalist who had many weeks of revival in his church and after those great revivals his church shrunk so there were those revivals made him so depressed and he started to seek the face of God on how to see people saved how to see people come to Jesus Christ because he said I don't want to be a pastor if people don't get saved he went for 21 days to pray and fast and after 21 days God gave him 20 things he needs to do with church and one of those 20 one of the many of those things were about evangelism how they should evangelize one of the things they used to evangelize is kind of like how we used to do with flyers on the streets uh, with um, big banners or six posters big posters like maybe seven feet away from each other and so people would drive and you know we waved our flyers at people and gave them and, and and nobody would come and if people would come our services were so socially awkward and we were socially awkward that people will get freaked out and felt like it was an inner cult or something like that because it was just very uh, we, we were not open to people we were afraid of people and people were of course afraid of us where we are headed evangelism and bringing people to Christ and being okay with sinners and not being freaked out when they confess their sins has to become norm for us in Jesus name we evangelize through TV yesterday on Monday night the, we uh, the moment I got out of the plane here in Pasco a lady who was sitting next to us uh, a chair from us she says you look very familiar I was like I think I do my name is Vlad I look like Vlad and she says no I we watch your shows every single week and I just want to let you know those shows have been really building my Christian faith and I was like praise be to God all of that is great but the evangelism we're talking about is not evangelism that somebody edits on the TBN or local channel and it puts it over there it's the evangelism you and I do personally for people who do not know Jesus Christ and somebody say amen and this revelation must hit us that each person each person in here has to become a person who wins other people to Jesus Christ by bringing them to Christ bringing them to church and having them serve Jesus Christ in Jesus name can somebody say amen the next thing is that there must be a revelation this coming year about about cell groups must be a revelation about cell groups I already mentioned about um, people who get saved or people who get delivered and they don't stick around and I mentioned that we are going to have cell groups starting uh, next month I really want all of us to make a decision to be in a cell group all of you to make a decision to have a cell group some of you you need to make a goal to have two cell groups because some of you you're single you have a lot of time on your hands and some of you you can have three cell groups when I went to Ukraine I found out one bishop he had three cell groups during one week and had many churches that he was overseeing and cell groups one of the main uh, worship pastors over there in Ukraine who leads worship and everybody knows it because he's always on the screen he has about three cell groups on Skype every single week oh and he has uh, I think two or three churches that he also oversees I was like you guys are nuts people have I mean over here we're trying to squeeze up squeeze up time for one cell group and people have time for two three cell groups every one of us must realize God wants you to have your own cell group during this coming year in Jesus name amen you can do that for the glory of God and one more revelation that I think we will need to really grasp is the revelation about sacrifice a sacrifice sacrificial giving um, uh, most of our leaders were aware that when we went to uh, we went to Ukraine we went there to um, to give a, a sacrificial gift and sow a seed into a ministry of Pastor Vladimir Montian and the purpose for that is that um, personally me and my wife we feel a huge obligation as we're our pastors raising us up and giving us the opportunity to minister we want to see people saved in our church on a big scale we want to see people delivered not just through anointing water but through regular services and in the cell groups and we see that happening in the ministry over there where we visited where deliverance happened in the services 
the brother pastor uh, Vladimir gets up gets a microphone exactly what happened in Wiseman Harry's revival people right away manifestations crazy deliverances crazy healings and that's exactly what we want to see here on our cell groups for the glory of God and we felt like it was appropriate for us to uh, take our savings the one that we were wanting to build a, another duplex and to find some more money and literally to just sow all of that into that ministry it was a large amount I the moment that thought entered into my mind two months ago I almost thought I was going crazy and so I told my wife thinking that she will think I am going crazy and she says I have been having the same thoughts I'm like okay we're both going crazy and I'm like wait well, if, if we mention to people people will think this is insane this is not wise why would you want to do that and by the grace of God we did that but even before that um, I was supposed to go on a mission trip in Tanzania and instead of going I decided to just simply send the money the money that it would take me to go the two thousand dollars or something and um, our own vacation that we've had saved up for next year in Mexico well those tickets got given away to other people some people have traveling right now to visit their family some are gonna come here uh, for those money and we really felt like that for us some of you know me personally and you know that for me it's very easy to save money I will not eat but I will save money uh, I will starve but I was I am I'm a saver okay and if I look at people don't save money I sometimes like I look at them and like man you got issues but for me to be extravagantly generous I'm talking about like crazy generous we have people like that in our church many of them but I wasn't one of them I was more of like the wise guy and I always said I'm wise but in reality I was scared I think and I wasn't I didn't have a revelation until the revelation hit my heart that I want to see people saved God gave his son he didn't give 10,000 bucks he didn't give a Mercedes he gave his own baby to be ripped on the cross by pieces nailed and for more than six hours hang there and the scorching sun of Jerusalem and cry for help and had him die so that I can be saved everything or anything I can sacrifice for the cause of other people to be saved pales in comparison with that sacrifice Jesus gave for me and I know that this coming year if I am gonna live like that you're all gonna live like that too for the glory of God amen and the easier for some of you it's easy because you don't have anything and it's easier to give when you don't have anything because you just give your heart but then when you start having something you have to lay it down on the altar for the cause of Christ you have to be willing to open your house so people new be new people on Sunday can come not just your family who you know they will not disturb and they will not spill coffee on your carpet because they've spilled before and you punish them are we talking about everybody who can come in to our homes buy food welcome people we will live like that we will see a revival can somebody say amen these are the revelations that we want to establish in our lives I know that some of you as you're hearing this it's scratching your heart it means God is giving you right now at that revelation it's a small fire protected guarded and it's gonna grow into something bigger and something better in Jesus mighty name